In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on stop orders. There are two ways to configure buy side stop orders, and I'm going to show you which one you should use and which one you should lose. In this video, we're going to look at buy side stop orders. Before we begin, I want to recap where we are at this point in the series. When I say series, I'm referring to the GDAX playlist on the Deep Lizard channel. The GDAX playlist currently contains three logical sections. The first section, 1 through 10, introduces Coinbase and GDAX by covering the company's policies and service offerings. It's designed to give us a feel for what we're dealing with when we get signed up. This is for really if you're a noob and you want to know about Coinbase and GDAX, and maybe you even already know about trading concepts, but you just need to get some more information about Coinbase and GDAX. The second section, 11 through 28, introduces trading concepts by covering the order book, order types, and how the different order types execute against the order book. It's designed to give us a quick and dirty exposure to these trading fundamentals if you are new to trading. So this section is for people who may already be familiar with Coinbase or GDAX, but aren't familiar with trading concepts. The third section is where this video belongs and starts at number 29 in the list. This section is designed to be more structured and aims to clear up any questions that may be outstanding from the previous section. The videos in this section build on each other, so be sure to go back and watch them before moving forward with this one. The first video in this section has a number one next to it and shows the order types and parameters that affect the execution behavior. This video really sets things up for all of the videos in this section. This section is the one where if you haven't already been taking notes, you may wanna take some notes to really get down everything in the section and make sure you understand the order types and how they execute against the order book. The second video discusses the order matching engine, which matches incoming orders with orders that are already posted to the order book. If there is no match, the incoming order is posted to the book. Orders on the book are said to be posted to the book, and these orders are the maker orders. They make it possible for takers to find a match. Orders that are matched with orders posted to the order book are taker orders. Taker orders never post to the book. They take from the book and every trade is a match between a maker and a taker. The next videos in this section begin systematically exploring each order type. We have market orders that always take from the order book at the best available prices on the book. We have limit orders that also do this but with limits. These limits are what make it possible for orders to post to the book as makers. The limit price can be set in such a way that there is no match at the time the order is submitted. If there is no match for an incoming limit order, the order is posted to the book and must wait for a taker before the order is filled. Stop orders build on top of market orders, giving us the ability to conditionally delay our orders. We discussed this delay feature in the previous video alongside of sell side stop orders, so be sure to watch that one as well. Now we are ready to look at buy side stop orders, so let's go ahead and begin. Stop orders as a group have four permutations. Two of the permutations are sell side stop orders and the other two are buy side stop orders. This means that once we have decided that we're gonna deal with a buy side stop order, there are two possible behaviors that we can expect to see when we submit the order. And these behaviors depend on the location of our stop price on the book. The stop price can be on the buy side or on the sell side. This depends on which price we choose. Once we understand this behavior, then we are equipped with the knowledge that we need to effectively choose a stop price. We wanna work with a stop order. Since our main focus in this series has been order types and how they interact with the order book, we're talking about the stop price in terms of which side of the order book it falls on. Another way to say this is that the stop price can be above the market price or below the market price. The market price for a seller is the highest bid. The market price for a buyer is the lowest ask. This fact allows us to see that when we are above the market price, we are on the sell side of the order book, and when we are below the market price, we are on the buy side of the order book. Buy side stop orders are delayed until the last trading price is greater than or equal to the stop price.
This allows us to place a buy side stop order above the current market price on the sell side of the order book. Without the stop price to stop the order from being submitted to the order book, this would not be possible because buy side market orders are matched immediately at the lowest asking price. One option that may come to mind is to use a limit order, but be careful. We saw in the limit orders as takers video that a buy side limit order with a limit price on the sell side of the order book is matched immediately at the lowest asking price and this is just like market orders the difference is we have a limit that allows us to control the maximum price that our order will execute at for a buy order and the minimum price that our order will execute at for a sell order the stop price gives us the ability to put our buy order on the sell side of the order book above the market price this is possible because stop orders give us the ability to delay our market orders by putting our order into a stop state until the condition is met and only after this condition is met the order is actually dispatched to the order book since we are dealing with plain stop orders without limit prices the buy side stop order will be matched with the lowest asking price at the time the stop order is triggered if our stop price is below the market price on the buy side our stop order will be triggered on the very next trade with little to no delay for this reason it doesn't make sense to put a buy side stop order below the market price on on the buy side of the order book. The order will behave just like a buy side market order, so we would just opt to use a market order in this scenario. We are now ready to jump over to GDAX and see these buy side stop orders in action. All right, we are now in GDAX, so let's go ahead and begin with the buy sell permutation. This permutation is a buy side stop order with a stop price on the sell side of the order book. And we know that the sell side of the order book is above the current market price. We are just using the term permutation because we defined this in a previous video and we're talking about a lot of different ways to configure these orders. So the word permutation in the simple notation of buy sell allows us to quickly and easily think about which one we're referring to. So if that's Sounds a little confusing to you make sure you see the first video in this section of the GDAX playlist the market price for buyers is the lowest asking price that lives right here at the bottom of the sell side order book there's currently 19 ETH available for sale at the lowest asking price if we want more ETH we must look at the next best price which happens to be well just above it's gonna be the next one in line but right now I'll go ahead and mention that we are experiencing a sell-off and usually in sell-offs we get a lot of volatility occurring so you're going to see the order book moving around a lot as we go through this demo we are starting with the buy sell permutation because buy side stop orders are designed for this purpose we use buy side stop orders when we intend to buy at a higher future price now one thought that may come to mind is why would we want to buy at a higher price and this really just depends on the particular strategy one reason is to stop a loss when going short a short sell must buy to close a short position and so the buy side stop orders are stop losses for short sellers another possibility is a momentum or a breakout strategy but whatever the case the requirement for buying is that the price must move higher a trade must occur that is at or above our stop price for our stop order to be triggered on the left in the order form section, we have stop selected. Our order is a buy order and we'll choose to purchase 10 USD worth of ETH. And we'll choose a stop price that is on the sell side of the order book. So we'll go with 1000 USD and I'm gonna increase this aggregation a few times just so we can see that and things aren't moving so quickly. So on the order book, we're looking at 1000 is where we're gonna go ahead and place our stop price. So we'll just place this order and we have a warning we are warned again just like we were in the previous video and we discussed this warning in the previous video so we'll just go ahead now and place this order and we see success and in our open order section we have our stop order the green badge on the left says stop 
at 1000. This indicates to us that our order is a stop order. The stop order will stay open until we cancel it or until the last trading price is at or above 1000. The last trading price for every trade can be seen at the top in the trade history. When a trade occurs that is greater than or equal to our stop price, a buy side market order will be dispatched to the order book and the matching engine will match our order with the lowest asking price on the order book at the time that this trigger event occurs. When this occurs, the order on the order book with the lowest asking price will be taken off of the book and used to fill our order. And this is what makes our order a taker in this scenario. We have seen this already for market orders and after the stop is triggered, this is exactly what we will have, a market order. The last thing I wanna say about this particular order is that it is not on the order book. This is because the order is in a stop state and waiting for the trigger before being dispatched to the order book. This stop state is necessary to keep our order from being filled immediately as opposed to waiting for the higher price condition to become true. If the order was dispatched immediately to the order book, it would be filled immediately at the current lowest asking price. Since we are delaying our order until the trigger, our order will be filled at the lowest asking price at the time the trigger event occurs. So let's go ahead and cancel this order and move to the buy buy permutation. All right, the buy buy permutation is a buy order with a stop price that is on the buy side of the order book under the market price. We have already said that this order will be matched immediately at the lowest asking price, but let's just see this in action. We have a stop order with buy selected, just as before, and again, we'll buy 10 USD worth of ETH, and we'll choose a stop price that is on the buy side of the order book. We'll go ahead and go with 800 for this example. Since the next trade that occurs after our order is submitted will already have a higher price than our stop price, the stop will be triggered right away, and we will see the market order dispatched to the order book and match at the lowest asking price on the book, which right now happens to be around 870. If we look at the top in the trade history, we can see that trades are executing right here around 865. And then if we want to see this, we got to increase our granularity on the aggregation. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we can see just there that the spread is currently 0.01. So the lowest asking price when we submit this order is going to be right around 863 and some change. Let's place this order and we will click place order and accept the warning. Three, 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 two, 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 one, 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 one. and we have purchased our ether. We can see that this order was filled very quickly and that's because trades are happening pretty rapidly right now because we have a lot of volatility occurring. We're right in the middle of a sell off. So as soon as we placed our order, we saw another trade come in and it actually triggered our stop and then our order executed right around 864. Looking in the trade history, we can see the trade that triggered our stop and we can see our buy side taker trade that followed. Our trade is an up tick in green indicating that the taker was a buyer. Now one thing I want to point out is that it actually took two separate orders for our trade to actually get filled totally. So our trade was broken into two pieces. We can see the first piece happened for 0 0.0001 ETH at a price of $863.47. The second part of our order that filled was 0 0.0114 at 864 and 16 cent. So what this actually represents is a good bit of slippage from that lowest price, that first price that we got at 863 all the way up to 864. So there was only a small bit of ETH available for us at that lower price of 863. In order for our order to fill completely, it had to move up to the next price at 
864. So that's slippage in action. And typically when you place market orders, you're usually going to see potentially some slippage like this. Sometimes the order will even be broken up into smaller pieces. So one order might have multiple different fill prices. And the reason for that is these partial fills that it takes to actually completely fill the order. Now this all depends on the composition of the order book at the time that the matching engine is filling this particular order. Since the buy buy permutation for a stop order is triggered right away, we can say that a buy side stop order under the market price reduces nearly immediately to a market order. For this reason, we would never use this permutation. Instead, we would just choose to use a market order if we wanted this particular behavior. This means that we have found our second order permutation that is not practical. Let's jump over to our spreadsheet and fill in these details. We can now conclude that both of the buy side stop order permutations are takers. This is exactly what we saw on the sell side as well. So all stop orders are takers. Now this can be deduced from the fact that market orders are takers because we know that stop orders are just delayed market orders. We can also conclude that the buy buy permutation is not practical. On the other hand, the buy sell permutation is practical when we want to buy at a higher price than the current market price. The buy sell stop order permutation represents the intended use of buy side stop orders and this completes our spreadsheet for plain stop orders up next we're going to be looking at stop orders that have a limit price there's many of those and we're going to see every one of them execute against the order book